Hi everybody, this is Anne. If you're looking for different ways to decorate your pottery, the first place you should start is with the silky slip from your reclaim bucket. By slaking down these fragments and using different methods to apply it, you quickly have an elegant decorating solution. I've been trying to collect various techniques from other potters to demonstrate to you. Many of them take a little practice, but I'm hoping to give you an overview and inspire you to try it yourself. Here's where we're starting, in my reclaim bucket. I scooped out some of the watery chunks, added more water, then used an immersion blender to slake it down to a creamy consistency. First I'll show you the easiest way to use the slip, with your fingers. I applied a heavy layer of slip to the surface of my piece with a hacky brush. You can do this step when the piece is fresh or even at leather hard. You can use one finger for even spiraled lines or use all your fingers both up and down for a crisscross pattern. Ooh, I really like that. On the same piece, I'll clean off the slip and do another variation. This time, I'm going to apply an underglaze to the surface and let that totally dry. I then applied the thick white slip over top of that. Now I can use a rubber rib to scrape off the slip in whatever pattern you like. I'm doing a straight spiral. Some of the underglaze came off along with the slip, but actually that gives it a rustic feel. Let's try using different items for the scraping process. In this case, I had this coarse bristle brush. Oh wow, that really gives you a coarser, tighter texture. Let's see what we can do with this smoother rubber rib. By using a chattering motion, it gives you this honeycomb sort of look. Next, let's see what we can do on a flat plate. I again applied a thick layer of slip. I have this metal rib with sharp teeth that I'm going to try. Again using that chattering motion, let's see what happens. Oh, I love that spiral, and also the added texture of the teeth. I found that I can bend this comb and use it along the curve of the plate to get another different effect. I could use it straight to achieve very uniform lines, but I thought I'd waver it a little and see what happens. Not my favorite but it has potential to give a piece an organic appeal. 
Let's try something similar with the flat edge of my rubber rib along the brushed on slip surface. Oh, now that is lovely. On a bowl this time, let's do the same thing with the rib, but add a technique that I learned from Joe Thompson at Old Forge Pottery, where he used a slip trail bottle to apply the slip. Now Joe uses a plunger to apply the slip, which I can see might work better. I'm just using an icing bottle. I've been dying to try this. Let me see if I can get that pattern like Joe. It gets more challenging to maintain a consistent pattern as I work my way upward along the wall. Now that's my first attempt on that. I think with a lot of practice I could get the hang of it. That is so cool. Another way to go is to add a mason stain to the slip. If you want to see more about how to do this, check out the link above. I brushed the green slip onto the piece and then dried it with a hair dryer until the shine was gone. I wanted the slip to still be leather hard, but not completely dry. I then took a carving tool and carved through the colored slip so you can see the contrasting color underneath. I'm just doing an easy pattern, but you can make it as complex as you want. Now let's use the slip in conjunction with a stencil. I wet the clay surface down, then stuck the stencil to it. I also used a brayer to make sure the stencil was down tight to the clay so the slip wouldn't bleed underneath. I applied the slip over the surface with my fingers. You can lightly rib the surface flat if you want, but don't flatten it out too much. That defeats the purpose of the raised texture. When I lifted up the stencil, I got this really elegant pattern over the top, ready for a nice celadon glaze. I have one more idea for you that I'm experimenting with on my own pottery, where I draw imagery on the clay and slip trail the surface to build up the design to give it depth and perspective. I then just underglaze over the top of it to complete the design. You can see how the slip really takes this piece to another level, um, pardon the pun. Now here they are, all glazed and fired. I bet you can come up with even more ideas for slip texturing your pots thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.